Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. We're here today with, of course, Linda's here, and Mel is continuing on from our last week's episode. So we're excited about that. So I want to thank everyone. If it's your first time coming, this is called Beacons of Balance, about living in balance. It's a world of duality. It's up, down, left, right, black, white. And we're here to bring some pearls of wisdom and different topics we talk about each month to bring balance so you can walk away with some pearls to bring balance back into our lives. We all need it. I need to hear things over again. We all do because we're all the same. So we're going to continue on today. And um, the topic, of course, we're talking with uh, medium psychics. It's interchangeable as, you know, we were talking about uh, about that with Mel and Linda earlier. Some people look at it differently, but whatever. It is what it is. It's our intuition. It's your gut instinct for all of us. I think you guys would agree, right? Our gut is when we all get that initial hit for anything, but then our, then we go up into here and we start extrapolating, pulling things apart to make sense. But when it's you called get analysis. That, yeah. It's called analysis paralysis. Yeah, but when we Mel get- mentions a light bulb goes off and I get a hit that's so strong I can almost put my life down on it. That's how strong it is. Not all the time. Like, I'll know something and I know it. And I'll just say, I know this and I just want you guys to know I know this. And he'll say, <laughs> my light bulb just went off. They come Linda, through. Linda, when you do that side take. Yeah, it's like low. my guides are talking to me. Oh, yeah, she does that. She gets quiet and she goes. That side take. I tell people when Linda does that side take, pay attention. Yeah. Mine's bulb is like whoa my light bulb went off yeah but, you know we we all get it we all have our intuitions and our abilities and stuff like that it's just uh, if you acknowledge it or not i remember going back years ago um to an orthopedist i woke up one morning and out of my knee there was a golf ball that appeared out of my by the side of my kneecap just from when i went to bed woke up and there was this big ball and i'm like what the hell so i go to the orthopedist and he said well he goes it's probably not cancer you know they give you that it's probably not but, but, so I'm like, oh, great. So I had to go in for surgery, you know, laparoscopic surgery. So I'm leaving the parking lot. Of course, then your brain starts going, da 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 And I go, oh, my God, well, just can't, you know, you start going through all the whole scenario, right? Linda, I have to tell you, we all have this when we, something hits us. I like usually cancer doesn't grow in one, one well, night. Well, that's, that's what he said. But, you know, I mean, there are bizarre things. And I'm bizarre anyway, so I'm weird. So weird stuff happens to me. So... I was leaving the parking lot and I swear to God, I'm going out and I'm thinking about this and I look over and I see a license plate and it says fat one, F-A-T-O-N-E, fat one. And I started laughing. I knew it was my angels and it was a fatty tumor. I'll be dark. Huh? Now, when I saw that, I just was, I totally let everything go and I said, that's what it is. I'm not even giving it, I didn't even give another thought. And guess Isn't what it was? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's what it was. Lipoma, but, fatty. Huh? The lipoma is a fatty. The lipoma, yes. So I said to the doctor, I said, oh, great. I said, now because I'm overweight, I'm going to have fat balls popping out all over. Because he said, well, they could come out. And he said, oh, great. So I'm going to have fat balls coming out all over my body. And he started laughing. He goes, you don't have to be heavy to have them. <laughs> it happens on thin people. <laughs> I go, yeah, right. <laughs> I said, my lot in life. So. <laughs> uh. And, and intuition is that first thing that comes through. Exactly. It's like you always a, go with your first hit, actually. Bingo. And then what happens is a student of mine called it this. We start thinking, is this my intuitive ability, my psychic ability? Is this me thinking this? And we take it apart, and that's the analysis paralysis. And that's what I talk about in my classes, like in Sedona, when we were there or here in Chicago. It's go with that first hit. Don't yeah. say guess it. Because if you do, then you know, then other things get and in the way. And you know what? It's almost like, I want to say this, it's almost like when we say our prayers or asking, right? The great almighty says, ask and you shall receive. We'll ask, that's a prayer form. You send it out, you release it. But guess what? Nine times out of 10, everybody takes it back. They take it, yeah. they pull it back in. Or they don't know. So they're giving the universe double messages. So it's like, yes, no, yes, no. You know, my husband was just going through this with retirement because he wants to retire, but he's like, oh, I just got another um, client. And he goes, oh, I go, well, what does that mean? <laughs> and he likes his clients. And I'm like, well, 
there's a time for everything. You have to decide. You're you're giving the universe mixed messages. Well, I tell right. people when you ask something, ask a specific question, not what's in my future. Because if you put out ambiguity, you're going to get that back. So when you put out a question to an intuitive or a psychic or a medium, Look. specific, because what? you're right, it's mis mixed messages to the universe. And then there's the period of time, like you guys always say, you know, we have choice. Like I say it's about choice, too. And <laughs> things change. So the landscape changes. Anything could veer around, you know? Right. We have and, choice, right? Free will. You, you free right. will into it. And a lot of times, people sabotage themselves. But you don't have to let them sabotage you in the process. Yeah, well, that, that was uh, yeah, yeah. Tell me no, about I think, it. I think we all have to kiss a few frogs. Um, I kissed the whole zoo. Oh, uh, me? Yeah, honey, I did too. <laughs> let me. We, the alligator we did whole, it was done. You know, <laughs> we could yeah. do a whole episode on that because oh, uh, look, well, kissing the oh, zoo. Oh God, yeah. You know, intuition can save your life. Um, yes. I I had cancer, oral cancer, and I went to an immediate care place, and they looked at, oh, it's a little blood clot in there, nothing to worry about. And I thought, oh, no. And I told my husband, I really think this is cancer. And then I, one doctor, I said, uh, you know, maybe you should talk to a therapist because maybe it's, I thought, no, it's in my throat. And then I went to an oral surgeon. Well, it doesn't look like much. And this is right before I went to Sedona. Take these antibiotics and if it goes away, it's better. Where did you, if I'm sorry to interrupt though, but this could be helpful for the audience also, not for people to go crazy, but just to be aware. Where exactly did you have, it was like under the tongue, on the palate, on your throat? No. Your throat, where was? I, I would feel like I had something caught in my throat occasionally. Occasionally, the symptoms were nothing to write home about. Okay. It, like a little breadcrumb or something. And then occasionally when I was using the water flosser, which I do two or three times a day, I would notice a little blood, but not all the time. I thought, and one morning, you know, I have to have my little bath every morning, sleep for 15 minutes in the bathtub. I've been doing it for years. And if I don't, I'm not nice the rest of the day. So I was getting out of the bathtub and I thought, <clears throat> I was clearing my throat. And I thought, there's feels like there's something caught in my throat. And occasionally I'd wake up with a sore throat I thought it was from snoring. Or if I'd look back at some of my YouTube videos, I thought I really sounded worse. Okay, fine. So that morning, I'm getting out of the bathtub, and I put the toothbrush in the back of my mouth, and it came out bloody. And when I opened my mouth and I put a flashlight back there on my tonsil, there was this gnarly-looking thing. And oh, so it was back. It was back. It was on my tonsil. Yeah, then, yeah. So it was back in your throat. Yeah. Like that. But nobody ever examined my mouth with their finger. They would just look at it. So the oral surgeon said, take the antibiotics, and if it goes away, n nothing to worry about. So I did Sedona. Linda, you remember? And, you know, it cleared up a little bit. It didn't look gnarly, just one little spot. And when I got home, uh, I went back to Sam. He goes, oh, it's cleared up. It looks great. Yeah, you don't have to worry. Well, I wasn't satisfied with that. So a couple of days later, one of my friends is a doctor, and her daughter was supposed to come to my office as a client. Her daughter, I mean, I'm sorry, her sister, her sister couldn't make it, so she came in. And I had taken a picture of it, and I said to my friend, would you look at this, please? I said, here's what's going on. And I explained everything to her, and I explained to you. And she looked at it, she said, that looks like cancer. That needs to be biopsied, and that needs, you need to have a CAT scan. So she uh, ordered the CAT scan. Later. The next day, one of my clients is an emergency room physician, and she looked at it. She goes, that looks like cancer. And she said, let me get you in to see an ENT, because they, had, they wanted me to wait for months. So I saw all him, and I showed him a picture, and he's examining me with, you know, they take the tube, uh, the scope, and they look. He said, that looks clear. And when he was examining my mouth, his whole energy changed. His whole energy changed. And when he finished, I said, you don't have a good poker face and your energy changed. He knew what I did for a living. He said, I really feel this is cancer. I feel a large tumor behind your tonsil. And I said, I'm going to Africa in two days. He said, go to Africa, have a good time. Like, okay. yeah. So when I got back, I had the surgery and it was cancer, but my intuition kept pushing me forward. Yes. And that same, and then Linda. By the way, did you go back to those other people who said it was nothing? I did. I did. And I said, here's what it was. Oh my God, we're so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I was so and I sorry. Said, if you listen to them, you'd be dead right now. I yeah. said to them, that rather than being so dismissive, this was, was at the emergency care center. I said, you were dismissive. You spent three minutes with me. You didn't even palpate my mouth. 
I said, you looked at me like I had two heads. And I said, the next time somebody comes in here with something like this, you need to take the time. And he said, yeah, well, you know, we were really busy. I said, that doesn't cut up with me. And he's apologizing all over the place. Well, you know, all doctors, you know, I'm not, that was the emergency care, but any a private, they give you 15 minutes. It's all, it's all corporate. It's all like, forget, what could you do in 15 minutes? Yeah, they're running under the, what, what the, could you do with the patient who aren't doctors are telling them they can, you, you know, have, every, you have to advocate for yourself. You have to have an ab, yeah, if you can't do it for yourself, you have to bring someone with you. Like I go with my husband all the time. They know me. They have my name down. They know my, my all these jobs. Oh, it's Arlene. I'm going, huh? Ah. And they, they must have a picture of me and go, you know what they write after it. But well, I hold their feet to the fire. I go, nope, sorry. They advocate for yourself mm -hmm. and don't let anybody gaslight you when you feel something like that. And for me, it was almost an obsession. It just wouldn't get out of my head. And it was my intuitive ability. And I was having dreams about it even. And I remember, you know, calling Linda once I, before I found out, when I found out, Linda talked me off ledges many nights. I would call her and I'm like, ah, you know, thank you. Well, Linda. I knew you were going to be okay. That was the main focus. Right. I didn't see you dying of cancer. I right. remember when it came. Yeah. And I said, I felt okay too, that you were going to be fine. And that's where everybody you sent out prayers, yep. which is very important. And it's I know. A lot. But the point of this whole thing is if your intuition tells you something, and if it keeps Listen. gnawing at you and gnawing at you, take action on it. And even if there's doctors that say, nah, keep going, don't give up. Listen, because I talked to top I talked to top medical people. They said minimum three. Minimum three. I had yeah. that, but minimum of three. Well, well said, you have to go four, you know what I mean? But minimum. The bottom line is is you know, it's nothing to worry about. And if you get this feeling there is something to worry about, then keep getting different opinions. It might save your life. It saved. Oh, definitely. Yes, that's maybe two saved save my life. Yeah. So there, there you go. So, so now let's go back to Mel. <laughs> it's another Mel, it's a little Mel. So, a lot of so growing up, you grew up what? And you grew up in the South. You were where? Uh, I grew up in a suburb of Louisville, Kentucky. When I was Look. a kid, before I moved here, I talked like this. But I've been here so many years, my accent's gone. And if I knew when I was young, I'd have been hanging out with him because his mama knew how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you have um, siblings, brother, sister, yeah. or the sister? Okay. Then I is she is she um, well, I'm going to say intuitive or whatever. Does she have psychic ability? Does she use anything or no? You know, she doesn't talk about it much. I don't. Either. I think we all have it, but yeah. yeah. You know, well, see sometimes that. it follows in the family lineage, you know, that people will have it. Or like I am, you know. Um, does but, she acknowledge you? What does she think about you? Not, not what does she think about you? What does she think about you doing the work? Well, she doesn't have much of a choice. I mean, you know, it's my life. So, you know, this is what I've chosen to do. And I'm sure no, there's... Many, many times, like, um, you know, when I stepped into my spirituality, I really owned, you know, I mean, we always were, yeah, I always was, but really did it fully on you can't you can't go back you can't deny what you are and a lot of times if you're with a partner or, you know even your family like for my kids because I was raised very Catholic do you know what I'm saying very black white da, da, da. when I started talking spiritual and angels they looked at me like I had five these are my own kids looked at me like I had five heads they're like oh who are you what are you, what are you talking about you know um so you that know, happens a lot of times yeah. in who Growing up in the South, my mom was Catholic and my dad was Protestant. He was United Church of Christ, a very liberal Protestant. He, you know, got born again later on, but whatever. Um, but I remember people, you know, with the work I did, they would say, oh, what you do is not of the church. It's no, that's a devil, devil work. Right. And, you know, or what's worse than, you know, in those days, being a psychic growing up in the South, being a gay psychic growing up in the South. And I had, you know, a double whammy. Um, but I, yeah, I've, I've heard that it's not of the church, it's not of this, it's not of that. And I'm like, folks, I have a blessing from the Pope for what I do. And then I have people tell me, well, the Pope's of the devil too. And that just really said me. Oh, oh, yeah, evangelicals, they don't, yeah. They're... Well, I won't argue that anymore. I just will not go down there. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, I've had people ask me, I had a lady in here not long ago, and she goes, I didn't come to get rid. I come to save your soul. And I said, from what? <laughs> and she said, you know, she went on and on. And I said, you have to pay. Well, I'm not going to pay you. I said, then we'll call the police department let them decide that. I wow. said, yeah. I'm well, listening. Have you ever had to call the police department? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, she showed up there and did that because I'll tell you, I had, well, when I had the story, I had every known religion, including satanic and demonics that came into my shop. They never stayed because the light, the light, um, couldn't they couldn't handle it they kind of bounced out like a rubber ball they came in and they bounced out but um where was i going on with this i can't remember i'm not, I'm Did, not into this there for you any, go. i'm not into this for anyone's approval or disapproval um thinking about what the family thinks my dad's side was very religious and some of them probably wouldn't approve but quite frankly but i don't she care. actually booked an appointment to sit down and tell you she was there to save you oh yeah she did she said to save your soul i said from what and she said, have you been born again? And I said, no, my mother did it right the first time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> then she said to me, oh, you're a practicing homosexual. And I said, I really did not have to practice. It just came natural. Oh, my God. I love it. So it was like, you know, I I mean, maybe the old me would have sworn, sworn her and thrown her out. But, you know, I heard what she had to say. But then when she said, I'm not, I said, you need to pay me my $200. Well, I'm not paying you. And I said, ma'am, we're done. Did she I end up paying you or not? I said, you can leave. And she said, will you take a check? I go, oh, no, 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 no. We won't take a credit card check because I'm not giving you the ability to stop payment on it. It's cash. And you knew that coming in. Good I said, no. Did she pay? I said, let's call. Pay? Yeah. Did she pay? I said, let's call the police department. And I turned around to get on the phone and she paid. <laughs> and I donated the money to charity. Good for you. Good so, for you. I, you know, with my what my family thought or growing up in the South, what they thought, you know, I came out of the psychic closet, closet early um, and the gay closet when I was 20. And I think it's a lot easier for people coming out as psychics right now. But if they're in a religious family, not that all religions are bad, and if a religion is a tool people use toward their spirituality, that's great. It just be can't judgmental. It can't be judgmental, in my opinion. Right. But I get it. The people, you know, when they're coming out now as a psychic, it's a lot easier. But some are still in situations where they're fearful to come out as a psychic. Yeah. Listen, so, there's people that are fearful. When I had the shop, I had this woman, you know, I, I could always feel when people came in for things. This woman came in, she was walking around. She was, I really like angels. And I like, she was just drawn, you know, and I could tell she was going through something. And I said, oh, you know, we'll look around and everything. She goes, you know, but I'm, I really shouldn't be here. She was Jewish. So she looked at an angel as a Christian. And I said, oh, I said, read the Old Testament. Yeah, oh, there's angels and them. <laughs> angels across the board, it's not religious. It doesn't matter. But her family, you know, they're probably more orthodox, her family, and the poor woman, she was going through cancer. And she came in there for solace and peace, and she just want, you know what I'm saying? And she couldn't get anything because she couldn't bring anything home. She couldn't tell them because, and I said, how horrible. Here she's going through something, and she can't even acknowledge that. So I put a little angel in her hand before she went home for her pocket. And I said, just take this with you. But, you know, people are like that. So getting back to this, I did want to, come back around and ask you so you kind of touched on it already was it easier for you coming out to your family telling them yeah. you're gay or was it easier for you coming out and telling them you were psychic was one harder than the other well as far as a psychic yeah. concern my dad you know he he had the gift you know we all have it but some of us have it stronger than others that's what i call the gift but you know it was normal in the household for other people in the South, it was like, oh, you know. But, you know, it's coming out as gay. When I was 20, my mother said, I have to ask you something. My parents were divorced. And I said, what is it you want to ask? And she said, are you, are you? And I let her see it. I knew where she was going with it. She goes, are you gay? And I said, yes. And she said, oh, thank the Lord. I thought something was really wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my stepdad was open about it. My father, when he found out about it uh, later on, because the woman he was married to um, told him, not that I cared, and he didn't talk to me for two years. 
And then when I uh, found out he had cancer, uh, I flew to Kentucky right away. And when he came out of surgery, he said to my sister and myself, to, to, you two kids will never know how much I love you. And we just listened to what he had to say. And my sister motioned for me to go out in the hallway. And she said, yeah, he's right. We'll never know how much he loved us because he never told us. Uh, you know, that he, generation, Mel, because we're all, we're all in the same arena. Uh, it wasn't that generation. You never. I didn't hear it. From, well, they read Linda's book. I cried because it remind me of certain. Well, yeah, aspects, it parallels with remind me of certain aspects of my father. Yeah, yeah. Who? There you go. It's a great book. You got to read it. Amazon. Just put in Linda Grindle. Good. Uh, got to read it. Um, my father to everybody out there was so nice and everybody loved him, but at home, at home sometimes it was like, who changed the channel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I mean, we would, well, we carried bruises sometimes. And, and so it took a long time for me to learn to forgive. You know, that's another story for another day. But, but um, so he didn't talk to me for a couple years. But I went to Kentucky when, when, you know, we found out he had cancer. He died like he had surgery. He died on his way from, from the hospital. And he told us, he said, you know, I had a dream that I died of a heart attack in an ambulance on my way to the hospital. And we're like, that's weird. And I told my sister, I said, well, you know, his dreams always come true. He, he was discharged on a Friday. My uncle and the woman he was married to was taking him home on the way home. He said, oh, I have a pain. And he had a heart attack, and they started doing CPR. Wow. They called the ambulance, and he died in the ambulance on his way back to the hospital. Wow. Ooh, I, got, I had a dream that I, I was having a it. big wedding with Brad Pitt, and you were there, and you were there. <laughs> <laughs> you better share, girlfriend. What, what happened to Gerard? You're just, you're <laughs> just a Gerard. You're just, just it's a Gerard it's, Butler. <laughs> Have you seen him lately? He's looking a little rough. <laughs> but, but I do understand how difficult it can be for people if, you know, the families are judgmental and the ultra right wing, supposedly Christian, whatever. That's not Christianity. Um, it's hard for them, people to come out as a psychic or to come out with whoever they are if, if the religion doesn't agree you with know, it. You know, you know. All of the things that we go through or that are part of us or whatever have been around since we since any since any of us took the first breath on this planet. It's been there. It's it's been in every every family unit has it, you know what I'm saying? But they didn't address this stuff was put under the carpet. You know, I remember having a female cousin who's in spirit now. But she was gay. I knew she was a little you know, as a kid, you know, she was a little different, but I loved her. She was wonderful. But, you know, the relatives would talk. You know what I mean? Like, they would keep it yeah. shielded and under. And I'm like, oh, my God, how horrible. How horrible to have to grow up like that and everything. You know, somebody that I love very much um, hey. was a certain religion, and I'm not anti-religion. And when that person came out as gay, he was shunned by the religion and, and, and the family. Um, and he said that he had to be who he was otherwise he knew that he wouldn't make it not that he was suicidal but that he just couldn't live a lie right and, and he knew what would happen that he would be shunned and to this day the ones that are still living that are still of that religion they don't it's like you don't exist yeah that's sad but you know what Bad on them but you know bad for no but not for him because yeah. he gets he, because he gets to be who he is, and my advice, my advice to everybody out there: we all have to be who we are. Is be who you are. That's an interesting statement because when I met my now husband, my third one, uh, when we met and after we were together for a while, he goes, "Oh, he goes, I just love being with you because I could be who I want, who I am." And I looked at him, I go, "Of course, see, I'm me." I go, "Well, who the hell would you be?" I mean, geez. <laughs> of course, we all know that Linda Grindle is a pole dancer. <laughs> That's my side job. <laughs> well, so so another point that I, well another thing I'm gonna bring up, um, it, it was just an observation. I think I mentioned this to you when we were scheduling. I just observed that a lot of the male um, psychic mediums happen to be gay. Not that well, 
But and so I'm thinking maybe because it's in touch of here we go the you know the the feminine and the male both together. I mean yeah. not across the board, but a big percentage of there's any correlation the, necessarily between being gay and having the the gift of, of psychic. I think. You know, in the Native American ways, you know, we all should be in tune with the male-female energy. Exactly. They balance. Don't you, know, you feel, don't you feel from the the work you do, and just for the time period we're in, first of all, eons ago, women were in charge. We were the uh, Amazon uh, women. We're, we ran the world, but then we turned it over and gave it to the males. They made a mistake. Now is it, now, mistake. huh? What's that? A huge mistake when they did that. But, 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 but now is a time it's coming back. And here we go. This is all about balance. Because I have a lot of women that are angry. I know one woman was into uh, Mary Magdalene, you know, the Magdalene. And because there's a yeah. lot of boy, there's a lot of lost texts that were, you know, when the Bible first came out and Constantine or whatever, right? And they gave the Bible. Well, the Pope then or whatever said, you know, it's for the common man. They're not going to understand this. So we're going to take out these books, we're going to take out some of the texts. We'll put them in after. Well, guess what? <laughs> that fell by the wayside. And the, more, the books that were taken out were about the women. <laughs> so, and ahead of you, because you really don't hear that much about the women in the Bible. I think um, we're um, to a point. Uh, and then you ba- I think we're here now to balance. So I know somebody that was really into the Mary Magdalene movement. But she, they were, like all the women are angry that the men have, but now they want the women to come back and, and take over. And I'm like, no, it's about balancing it now between the both i see a point in time <laughs> where it's not going to matter what sex you are whether you're lgbtq and the rest of the alphabet that you can go through it's going to matter what you are as a person and what you can contribute in your job how you can help others i mean there's always going to be people who won't like it but i see them becoming the the small minority and the rest of us saying, live and let live. And we don't care who you sleep with. We don't care what two consenting adults do. We don't care about, you know, what your uh, what your gender identity is. We don't care, you know, if you're gay, straight, bi, whatever. Um, it's just okay to be who you are as long as it's being a productive well, member. It's also, it's also, there's one step beyond that persona you're saying that's human related correct there's another step you can go which is being connected to source being Bingo. okay bingo and that connected to source i'm talking true store true source not the judgmental stuff that right. some people do when they supposedly are religious connected with true source is about acceptance tolerance love understanding that's connected to source that's what jesus and all right are all about well my native tribes it was a woman that was in charge the men went out to go get the beef that's but right the women were the ones who held on to their values did the tents did made things made food bore the children it was the women that keep kept thing and going and they also didn't care if you were attracted Gay. to the same sex right and because lot- they were awake they were living in the now correct A lot of native tribes felt that people who were gay were blessed with both spirits and that they became the medicine people, the healers, and some of the warriors even. I mean, they didn't sit in judgment, you know, Uh, everybody- That's the whole thing. It's the judgment. We have to get out of the judgment. And any of the religious fanatics or whatever, whoever they may be, you know, they point the finger. And I always say, you're pointing the finger, where are the rest of them pointing to? That's right. Yourself. And I always say, get out of here. Most of us are in here and come from here. Everything comes from here. If it's not from here, it's totally, you know, for those that are listening, I'm pointing to my heart. Um, you know, it just falls, falls on. Falls I, you know? not, I'm not here to prove or disprove anything to anybody. I want to do my work. And no. me doing my work or living my life, you know, maybe other people will see that and it will help them uh potentiate their abilities and to be themselves right it's right so just let me clarify everybody that's listening we're not here to knock any religions or anything even though oh, I come oh. from a spiritual way we're spiritual um a people go and they need to go into the buildings because people gather there and it is felt the energy in that patrick swayze had a great he was being interviewed by barbara walters of course many many years ago 
And I don't know who was practicing uh, Buddhism at the time. And she, she was asking him about that, about religions. And he said, you know what? He said, all religions across the board, at their core, at their center, have the truth in it. They all have, the, they come from the truth. But he said, what happens is they turn it into this. And for people that are listening, I'm, yeah. the fingers rubbing together, it's about the money. And it's such a true statement. You know, it becomes about the money. So, I'm not, I'm not anti-religious, absolutely not. I do, I do uh, like to go to mass. I do like, um, you know, the pomp and circumstance of it. The ceremonies, you know? yeah. But also, you know, when you get people singing and moving, I love. I used to love to go in the cell to the Black Baptist churches. Because people were singing, they were moving, and the energy of it was and just... And it vibrates right into your soul. It's like yeah, it's Linda just, with the oh, Native American, the beat of the drum, the boom, boom, boom. It's the the energy is just so uplifting. Or when I'm in Hawaii and I see, you know, uh, people doing the hula and just to listen to the music, to me that is so spiritual, you know? And you said, like, I don't care if you're Buddhist, I don't care if you're Hindu, I don't care if you're Catholic, Protestant, whatever... You know, it's just about the energy should be uplifting and healing and not judgmental and hurting others. So on that note, as we're wrapping up, I want to let everybody know the first Wednesday of each month, and this came from my guidance, and I used to do this when I had my shop, doing a world peace uh, prayer for the world meditations the first Wednesday. Uh, so you'll see that air the first, actually it's May 1st, so it'll be on, or it was on. But it'll be every first Wednesday of the month will be dedicated to that. And it was something we need it. You know, Linda on her channel, you know, does uh, prayers for people. I'm and overwhelmed with it's, prayers. It's we, I, the guy, what I heard is it's time we need it. And it's so funny. Other people that, you know, that I'm looking at as guest speakers, that they have the same message that's coming through that I hear from them that they're saying. So it's going around and we really need to join. It doesn't matter what we're cut from, different walks, whatever. It doesn't matter. When you come together and you send that out, and, and people that have transition or have near death experience of that, they say when people are praying, like everybody, Mel prayed for you, and I'm sure Linda, everybody prayed for you when you were going through your cancer. It's like ribbons of light that are sent up that they yeah. see, they actually see it. They see that energy. It's so important. Praying for peace or meditating for peace is ages. You know, you do it, and other people feel that ripple effect. Yeah, and they do it, and it just. It, and then it grows exponentially. So, yeah. and it doesn't take a big amount of people to make the change. So that's another important thing because it does it replicates. Starts with one. Starts with one. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you again, Mel, for taking time to be here with us. Um, oh. For everybody out there, thank you for uh, seeing, listening, hearing us, and um, as always, Linda, be the change you want to see. That's Yay, right. I love that. And from our hearts to yours in total joy, love, and peace. Remember to subscribe, like, send comments and everything. Help us grow. And have a great one. We'll see you next and, time. And buy Linda's book. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. Love you. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.